Divers, welcome to another installment of Mysteries, Mysteries of, of the, the Days. Day. I'm Tom Feeney, podcaster and purveyor of pop culture propaganda. This is a side project of the Deep Dive Podcast, where myself and my co-host Amanda take a look at some of the more interesting offerings available on streaming media. This week, we'll celebrate Black History Month by diving headfirst into the fascinating story of one company who, albeit inadvertently, helped to create one of the most influential movements in the history of American music, the Delta Blues. Mysteries of the Deep presents The Southern Side of Sears. Back in the 1990s, when department store chain Sears was still something of a retail powerhouse, their slogan was, see the softer side of Sears. Not exactly a hard sell, but at the time Sears was so well known, the company had no need to push. At its peak, there were more than 3,500 Sears department store locations. Now, in 2022, there are only around 30 left. The story of Sears' decline is a topic for another time. This is all about how the chain, back when it was known as Sears Roebuck & Company, changed how America bought its goods and services, and how that impacted African American communities, especially in the Deep South. pre-industrial United States, most people went to their local general stores to buy their goods and supplies. Now, depending on the store, their distance from a supplier, or the availability of any particular item, prices and selection could vary wildly from place to place. There was no centralized place where folks could simply order items for delivery. That all changed in 1887, when two men, Richard Warren Sears and Alva Curtis Roebuck started a mail order company selling watches and jewelry. By the end of the 19th century, Sears Roebuck and Company's mail order catalog had listings for thousands of items. Everything from fancy newfangled stoves to sewing machines to hypodermic needles. You know, for the usual reasons. Opium, laudanum, morphine, that sort of thing. If it was available to be bought, the Sears catalog had it. Even houses. Beginning in 1908, the Sears catalog sold house kits for around $6,000, roughly $170,000 in today's dollars. Sears would ship all the materials and provide local labor to build it. After the automobile became more commonplace in America, mail order sales slowed down. To adapt to a more mobile and more city-centric society, Sears began opening retail stores, which also became very successful. For African Americans living in the Deep South during the Jim Crow era, the retail experience was often a difficult, if not degrading one. Many white store owners would often make black customers wait for hours while white customers were being served first. They would also engage in price gouging or even refuse service altogether. The Sears catalog provided African Americans with a way around dealing with these racially motivated obstacles. You ordered what you wanted from the catalog and had it sent directly to you, much like people do today with online ordering. It gave African Americans a sense of autonomy that had been willfully denied them by their white neighbors. In fact, this means of acquiring goods by mail order angered many Southern shopkeepers who wanted to hold on to their local monopoly and their stranglehold over black customers. There were reports of Sears catalogs being burned in bonfires 
and local stores refusing to sell stamps to black people so they wouldn't be able to send in their orders. To combat this effort to stifle catalog sales, Sears began including instructions in their catalogs on how to get your mail carrier to send the order in for you, bypassing the local stores. While the Sears catalog became an indispensable tool for getting necessary goods, it also opened up other avenues. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, African-American music consisted of spirituals and folk songs. The primary musical instrument used was the banjo, which can trace its roots directly to similar African instruments. However, the banjo was somewhat limited in its ability to produce a wide range of sounds. If you wanted to be a serious musician, you needed a guitar. More than that, you needed a decent guitar. Yes, there were cheap ones out there, from poorly constructed bodies and unreliable strings made from cat gut, which, despite the name, were actually made from sheep or goat intestines. The Sears catalog changed all that by offering an inexpensive but fairly well-made guitar with steel strings. In the early decades of the 20th century, you could purchase those guitars for less than $50 in today's money. It was still a pretty penny for poor sharecroppers, but it was now within reach. The so-called Sears guitar allowed people who had never before thought of taking up the instrument to play. That, of course, also included an upcoming generation of African-American musicians who were creating something that would change the world. During the 1920s, deep in the Mississippi Delta, a new form of music was being crafted, a uniquely American form, the Delta Blues. It's about as hard to pin down what the Delta Blues actually is as is trying to do the same for rock and roll. It encompasses different styles, different perspectives, and even different vocal techniques. But one thing the Delta Blues had that no other genre did was a point of view unique to the men and women who brought the music to life. The stories that are told through the music. And not just stories of heartache and tough times. There were songs of hopefulness and joy, of love and loss. Someone that don't love you. Artists like Muddy Waters, Ma Rainey, Big Joe Williams, and Memphis Minnie would become synonymous with the Delta Blues. That music would influence the next generation of rhythm and blues artists, which would in turn influence rock and roll, hip-hop, and pretty much all genres of popular music. Now, of course, the Sears and Roebuck Company did not do all of this out of a sense of kindness, fairness, or social justice. It was pure capitalism that drove Sears' business practices. Sears didn't care one bit if you were black or white, as long as your money was green. It doesn't diminish the fact that the Sears catalog was the great equalizer when it came to providing Americans with everything from 
brain pills to arsenic wafers, yum, to tombstones. By the way, if you are an aspiring musician, you can still buy acoustic guitars from Sears.com. They range in price from $25 up to around $300. You know, sometimes I wish I had my whole heart in my hand. Thanks for listening. If this is the first time you've heard this podcast, check out our past episodes and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. And we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at the deep dive podcast at gmail.com or on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter feeds. You can find links to those on our website, the deep dive podcast.com. All clips used in this podcast are meant for educational purposes only and not to infringe on existing copyrights. Mysteries of the Deep is a production of Automaton Studios.